is Dr. Yoko Chanel. Let's study together about how to prevent disease or what chronic disease is. The most important thing in chronic condition is what the root cause is. Let's find your root cause. Do you have a persistent cough, post-nasal drop, stiffness of shoulder or neck even after massage? And a headache when you feel stress, chronic fatigue or pain, eruption of hands or feet. If you have those symptoms, you may have chronic epipharyngitis. You don't know chronic epipharyngitis. Don't worry about that. I will talk about what chronic epipharyngitis is and why you can't recover from chronic condition. I will explain where is epipharynx. The epipharynx is the, this red circle under the pituitary and the hypothalamus. The upper part of pharynx we call epipharynx. The other way to say uh, nasopharynx it extends from the base of the skull to the soft palate. This place is rich of activated lymphocytes and the most vulnerable site of upper respiratory infection, air pollution, smoking, and toxin. The epipharynx is an immunologically active site even under normal condition. And also this place is a, a role in antigen presentation and the secreted immunoglobulin A. Under the stress or immune balance abnormality, the epipharynx can turn into chronic epipharyngitis. The concept of chronic epipharyngitis was originally proposed by Dr. Horiguchi. He was an oralaryngologist in the 1960s. The chronic epipharyngitis related with various symptoms and disease. There are three reasons. The one reason is the place. The place is near head, nose, mouth, and throat. And the direct or radiated symptoms, such as headache, shoulder stiffness, neck stiffness, sore throat, throat discomfort, tinnitus, post-nasal drop, persistent cough, and low-grade fever, and so on. And also, this place is related with the autonomic system. So, this function of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and this autonomia, such as uh, also static dysregulation, meaning when you stand up quickly, you feel dizzy and a uh, black side. And the dizziness, restless leg syndrome, gastrointestinal syndrome, general fatigue, and the generalized pain. And also, this place is very easy to get inflammation. So the focal inflammation, such as dermatitis, glomerulonephritis, IgA nephropathy, chronic urticaria, pustulosis palmoplantaris, uh, meaning it's difficult, but it meaning the uh, eruption on hands and feet, and arthritis, reactive arthritis, some other autoimmune disease. And uh, this slide shows how to diagnose and treat. The diagnosis and treatment are the same way. Uh, to diagnose, of this inflammation can only be made by direct surface abrasion, meaning scrubbing uh, of the epi epipharyngeal muco uh, mucous membrane. So we, uh, we call uh, epipharyngeal uh, abrasive therapy, EAT. A pain during and after abrasion of the epipharyngeal mucosa with local hemorrhage, meaning the, uh, the hemorrhage means the presence of epipharyngitis. 
The to treat epipharyngitis is a 0.5% zinc chloride solution should be applied uh, slowly to the epipharyngeal uh, wall with a cotton swab repeatedly until the severity of ablation pain and the post-abrasive ablation hemorrhage reduce. The first step is through nose and the next through mouth. And uh, you can watch this movie. The chronic epipharyngitis uh, can't detect with endoscopic standard mode. It looks normal uh, except uh, a small pass. Only if we suspected this condition and the scrub with cotton swab, the hemorrhage means the presence of epipharyngitis like this movie. These pictures show what the treatment looks like. In my clinic, a patient lie down on the bed. But the some clinic, uh, the patient can sit down. Or the some oral laryngologists use the endoscopy. The severity of pain and the hemorrhage gradually reduce in response to EAT, suggesting resolution of the underlying inflammation. So why this treatment uh, is effective? So I will explain the mechanism of EAT. There are three mechanisms we thought. The very strong anti-inflammatory effect of zinc chloride. The zinc chloride has an anti-inflammatory effect. Epipharynx is rich of uh, lymphocyte and uh, vulnerable to inflammation as I explained already. The second mechanism is bloodletting effect of EAT. Submucosal edema is an important sign of inflammation. So direct surface abrasion of the epipharyngeal mucosus membrane improves the edema with interstitial fluid containing various antigenic molecules and cell debris. And the third is stimulation of parasympathetic tense cranial nerve, the vagus nerve, the epipharynx receives autonomic input via the pharyngeal plexus, which consisted of afferent and efferent fibers from glossopharyngeal nerve and the vagus nerve. So I will show one case report. So this case, uh, chief complaint is persistent cough over 10 years. So she was diagnosed cough variant asthma. So she was prescribed those medicines for long years, the, such as a, a anti-allergic uh, drug, and the, the next drug is a proton pump inhibitor. So that some doctor think the chronic cough, persistent cough, because of a gastric acid over. So. Uh, they prescribe to the patient uh, proton pump inhibitor. But if, he, if it effective is okay, but the, uh, some patient uh, take the, those medicines long term. If you take such a proton pump inhibitor and H2 uh, blocker, uh, meaning that you, you, you maybe have a, a malnutrition and the uh, dysbiosis, in the gut. So you have to be careful of using the uh, long term those medicine. And the, the next medicine is the sleep pill uh, because uh, she has a, a cough during the night so she has to take the uh, sleeping pill. And the three, the next three uh, medicine is inhalations. So she took the uh, EAT once, she recovered whole symptoms and she could quit whole medicine. Of course, not all patients can recover from one time EAT, but the EAT is very effective 
especially the persistent cough is very effective. Over 80% or the 90% patient can recover on the uh, few time uh, EAT. And according to Dr. Horiguchi and uh, other doctor who has over 60 years experience of EAT, there were no severe complications, but I think we have to be care of nasal breathing, like a condition of hemorrhage disease such as hemophilia, or using a medicine such as anticoagulant, like warfarin and Norwalk, and uh, antiplatelet and an MSAs. So what do you think after watching uh, these movies? So you are very afraid of pain or the hemorrhage, but don't worry about that. There are some other way to protect the epipharyngitis. So the first step is we can care of food like easy induced inflammation, gluten and casein, so meaning the flour and the dairy product and the sugar and the processed food. So you have those symptoms so you should stop taking those food at first. So the next uh, uh, very effective method is mouth tape, like these pictures. Uh, it's the best way to protect the chronic epipharyngitis or mouth breathing. So the, uh, the very effective also the virus infection, and uh, including influenza and the mouth dry too. So mouse dry is uh, induced to uh, negative impact inside the mouth. Dry mouth can cause inflammation around the epipharynx too. So the other uh, way I always use for patients, so nasal drop. So I use a zinc chloride or the diluted plum extract and the horse oil, etc. And also move mouth greatly like a, i, u, be. So it's very effective to training inside uh, mouth muscle. And the gargle, very big gargle. And the face yoga. If you are interested in this uh, treatment, uh, EAT, so this site shows over 200 clinics and hospitals which have EAT available. Thanks for uh, watching. What do you think? The most important is what root cause is. If you can't find root cause is, you can't recover completely. So let's study more about uh, chronic condition and the disease. Thank you for watching.